Now let's take question number 16. In a triangle PQR, let A vector, B vector, C vector are given as QR, RP, PQ. If mod A is 3, modulus of B vector is 4 and this equation is given as true, then the value of modulus of A cross B whole square, this is what we are looking for. So let's understand, we can plan this question by considering this result, what this result is talking about. This is saying A vector plus B vector plus C vector is 0, correct? Now from here we can find A dot C to put it here, correct? Or we can try to find A dot B to put it here or we can simply say C vector is minus A vector minus B vector and we can replace it there. Either way we can go for it, it is not going to make a big difference, alright. A vector modulus, B vector modulus, 3 and 4, so this is 7. So let's write here, this is 3 by 7, cross multiply. So this gives you 7 times C vector is minus A minus B, put it here. So we have minus A minus 2B. So this is minus A dot A, that is mod A square, 9. Getting my point, what I am saying? I am simply saying I have replaced this C with minus a minus b. I have replaced this c with minus a minus b. So we have minus a minus 2b multiplied dot product with a vector. So that gives you minus 9 then a dot 2b, correct? So we have minus twice of a dot b is equal to 3 times c is replaced by this one and we have a minus b again. So minus of a plus b dot a minus b. That means minus sign can be taken out or we can read it as mod b square minus mod a square. I am sure this part is clear what we are doing. All right. Let's simplify it further. This gives you simply a dot b is equal to minus 6. Now we obtain a dot b as minus 6. What we are looking for? We are looking for a cross b modulus whole square. Let's write down. Modulus of a cross b whole square is mod a square mod b square minus a dot b whole square. Correct? This is 3 into 4. It's a square. That is 144 minus minus 6 square that is 36 giving you result as 108. So I am sure this part is clear. Now let's move on to the question part. It is being asked what is the value for this one? So yes this is 108.00. I am sure this part is clear. Let's move on to the next one now. This is in section 3. For a polynomial gx with real coefficients let mg denote the number of distinct real roots of gx. Suppose S is the set of polynomials with real coefficients defined by this one. For a polynomial F, F dash and F double dash meaning first and second derivative respectively, the minimum possible value of M F dash, M F double dash. That is number of roots in F dash plus number of roots in F double dash. Now F is from this one. You can see x square minus 1 whole square, repeated roots. This is clear. It has repeated roots. When you take its derivative, clearly 1 and minus 1 will be the roots and there will be one more root between these two repeated roots. Am I clear on it? Either you can directly conclude or you can go with Rolle's theorem. What that says? Since we have end values at minus 1 and 1 both equal, so derivative will have at least one root in the interval minus 1 to 1. Now derivative is also having same value 0 at minus 1 and 1, meaning its second derivative will have at least one root in that interval. Is that clear? Alright. So totally what we are observing here that f dash has at least three roots, minus 1, 1 and say c. What is c? C is something between minus 1 and 1. Now F double dash will have at least two roots. 
That's why we have f dash is having at least three roots. So its derivative will have at least two roots. Correct. So the question is saying what is the minimum possible value for the sum? Obviously, this is 5. I'm sure this part is clear. Time to take up the next question now. So moving on to question number 18, it says the value of real number a for which the right hand limit of this one is equal to a non-zero real number. Let's understand. Limit x approaching to 0 plus 1 minus x raised to the power 1 by x minus e minus 1 upon x a, let's say is equal to lambda, where lambda is non-zero real number as I am assuming. Lambda is non-zero real number. Correct. Now, if I consider this term as 1 by x, taking log, we have log y is equal to 1 by x multiplied with log 1 minus x, which can be expanded as minus x minus x square by 2 and so on. That means y is equal to e to the power minus 1 minus x by 2 minus x square by 3 and so on. I am sure this is clear. Going back to lambda, put this value over there, e to the power minus 1 can be taken common. What we are left with? This term minus 1 upon x a. Now, obviously, for non-zero real number, this is 0 by 0 form, right? When you expand this numerator, what you will be getting? Limit x approaching to 0 plus e to the power minus 1 into 1 plus minus x by 2 minus x square by 3 and so on plus next terms would be having higher power of x. So no need to write because I have to go for the minimum value. Now here I observe x can be taken common and can be cancelled. So what is the minimum value you will be getting over there? You will be getting non-zero value when a is 1. If a is greater than 1, denominator will have zero term while numerator is non-zero. So it, it will go to not undefined term. Getting my point? So yes, here clearly the answer obtained is 1. Let's check out. We can write here the correct answer for this question is 1. I'm sure this part is clear. So this is all about paper 1 of JE Advanced 2020. Thank you.